so there is as far as uh, veterans benefits is concerned there is in your packets uh, regarding veterans benefits so I'm going to go over briefly some numbers now about the benefit you'll see there's a single sheet uh, back and front that says veterans benefits on it uh, you don't have to write all these numbers down because everything I'm going to say is is on this sheet on the veteran sheet um, it's a uh, it's a benefit that not many folks have heard of called the aid and attendance pension benefit and it can be quite useful uh, under the right circumstances these are some of the numbers here so for a married veteran who needs help from another person aid and attendance in other words attendance or help from a third party um, needs medical assistance it will pay 3169 or I'm sorry 2169 a month for a married veteran a um, little less 1830 for a single veteran and then 11 almost 1200 a month for the widow of a um, deceased veteran so that obviously can be very useful when it comes to paying uh, medical costs there are basically four eligibility requirements. The first time is war. T the first one is wartime service, and again, the the wartime dates are on the um, in your sheets on the back of the sheets. Basically, what we're looking at now are World War II veterans as well as Vietnam and Korea era uh, veterans. And then there's a disability requirement. Basically, for purposes of this uh, benefit, the VA says if you're over 65, that, then you're disabled for the purposes of this uh, benefit. So, um, so that's good. That's easy enough. The person is or isn't in that category. But there are some rather strict um, net worth as well as income requirements as well as a new look back period which the VA sort of piggybacked on the um, the uh, Medicaid benefit rules and said that they were going to in, in 2018 they introduced a look back period as well so as far as the net worth whether you're single or married the, if you have or if the veteran or veteran and spouse has more than 123,600 then they do not qualify automatically for the benefit and that does include the veteran's income so what we can do and we've done this for many veterans is it doesn't matter what the number is but let's say the veteran has two 200,000 let's say in savings what we can do is we can put those savings into a trust and the veteran can still have access to the trust uh, take money in and out of it but after a period of time the money in the trust is disregarded for purposes of the benefit and so what they did was it used to be if we set up a trust like that in November we could apply for the benefit in December what but what the VA says now is no that money has to be in the trust for at least three three years so if we set up a trust now in November of 2021 it would be October of 24 before that money was fully protected in in the trust for the veteran so those rules are, are very similar to to the Medicaid rules which we'll we'll talk about exactly exactly yeah that's what's that's exactly right that's what's referred to as the look back period and that was introduced as I say by um, by the VA in 2018 it was supposed to mirror the Medicaid rules but it really do didn't 
One big reason is that the VA for some reason lumped in assets and income all into one pot, which even Medicaid doesn't do that. But because, because of these rules in 2018, it means that a lot of veterans, because of their income, a lot of veterans don't qualify um, for, for the for the benefit, so we have to do some planning with a, with a trust or other forms of planning. 